Welcome and welcome back guys. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at recreating that very familiar and very nice looking Google refresh loading circle spinning thing. Let me show you what I mean. So that little loading bar that I bet you tend to see all the time like on your phone if you're refreshing like your Gmail or something like that. It's part of the Google material design philosophy, Google materials, sorry, um, and there's a lot of information stuff on that. Typically though, the loading bar is actually created in programming, um, so it's gonna work a bit different how it would be created there and how we're gonna create an After Effects, because we're gonna use this, as say if you're doing a product demonstration and you're trying to create some kind of um, video, like software demonstration, how that's gonna work, or you might just be you know, looking for something to do. So we're going to be using After Effects to create this, and it's all going to be done in After Effects. So let's create a new composition. Our composition is actually going to be set to HD, but with a twist. We're going to be using a portrait phone. So our width is going to be 1080, and our height is going to be 1920. Um... We, yeah, we'll set up six seconds for now, and 30 FPS will be fine. Cool, so as you can see, that right there is what would be, say, like a Samsung Galaxy phone, or um, maybe your Huawei, or whatever phone you've got. Most phones tend to be HD these days. iPhones, obviously, slightly different aspect ratio, but let's not muddy the waters with that. So I'm going to create a new white solid background. Um, and I'm going to zoom in a bit and go towards the top of my screen. So, this is all going to be made from a sphere, or an ellipse even, not a sphere, an ellipse. And let's just draw a quick circle, and if you hold shift while you're pulling this out, um, it'll create a perfect circle. So. It's my fill set to red at the moment, which doesn't matter, and my outline is currently set to blue, and my stroke is set to 16. Um, you can sort of change this. I think as well what Google tends to do as well is they'll have like a like you know the human saturation thing where that changes over time, and like every time like it completes a rotation. We could totally do that, be fairly straightforward, but for now let's just set it to blue. So we want to get rid of this red section in the middle, and we're going to go drop down into our lips, find fill, hey fill, and drop that opacity until it disappears. So you'll note as well at the moment, our circle is massive. It won't be that big, so let's scale it down a bit as well. To about how it would be. Yeah, that looks about right. Yeah, that looks about right. Kind of makes me want to boost up our stroke a bit, though. So I'm going to do that, maybe knock it up to about 20. Give it a bit more weight. So Google put this in the center. Um, don't put it on any edges or anything, which I'm sure would look nice too. But So we want it relatively central. So the effect that we're going to be putting on this is part of the preset, so if we click our drop down, we see this little add icon, there is also the add up here, but for the same thing, we want to use the trim paths, trim paths, and let's drop that down, and you see we have three values, we have the start, end, and offset, so if we drop this down as well, and drop this down, and this is how we would get a shape to sort of follow our path. And our path right now is a circle. And think of offset as in that's how it like rotates around. So it actually did take me a while to sort of figure out the numbers of this. And what I was having a lot of problems with was um, basically we work in percentages over here in After Effects currently. So how complete is our shape. So I'm going to start at 0 and 8 for point of example. This would be our start shape. And then after like a second, we'd come to about 80% to get the full. 
But then how do we bring that back is um, sort of the tricky part. So this would then follow and come to say 72. And what we would get is that sort of style as it's um, rotating around its axis. But then we end up on 72 by 80. And what I actually want to end up on is 0 by 8. And I just couldn't get it around my head for a while. Um, so what I ended up doing is taking pretty much all of that out, taking this, the keyframe off the rotation and starting in the middle. So I'm going to start in the middle with 36 by 40. Yeah, you can go slightly more or less depending on how much middle point you want. And I think Google pretty much use a very small middle point. That's sort of enough to show the loading, but you could go like maybe 34 by 42 if you wanted to add a bit more to that or something like that. Maybe just if you want to split it a bit more. And before the second is complete, we want to bring our end up to 80. So we want to find that point in a way where the longest and drop that down to zero. And this creates the point because the circle never completes. The whole idea is the circle never completes. It just rotates between those points. So I bring both sides out and come to this point. And I want to hold this shape for a while. So I'm going to keyframe it. So that's enough time to hold the shape. And now I want to bring my tail round. So I'm going to come back to 36 and 40, which is sort of our starting point. So now what sort of happens is that. And it doesn't look like much at the moment, but if we take this and then we copy and paste it. I'm actually going to bring it down a little bit. So I want the whole thing to be sort of done in at the, under the three second ish mark. I'm going to take all that again, copy and paste on the three second point. And over time, I want you to spin around eight times. So what's actually going to happen is. Sure, both sides are coming out, expanding outwards, but hopefully behind the rotation because we're rotating clockwise, it should mask that. So let's find out and have a look. Yeah, I like that. I think that's pretty good. I'm actually quite surprised to know quite as well as that. If yours isn't perfect, you might want to bring like elements closer together or further apart. So there's this moment here where it does go quite fast. So speed up, speed up, and then we sort of stutter a little bit and slow down as our tail's catching up. There. Is it? Yeah, it's this point here. And if that's the case, you know, you can take this middle point and maybe like bring it back a frame or two and then see how that looks. Now we, we slow down way too much then. So let's take it right by two frames. Let's see how that looks. You know, I do quite like that. So there's a, a second point. So I'm going to do the same on both sides. I'm actually going to just take left one, right one. So these ones go back one frame. These ones go forward one frame. And let's see how that looks. That looks pretty good, but we're going to do one more small thing just to make it a little bit better. And what we're going to do is apply a motion blur. So if you've not used the motion blur before, it pretty much does what it says on a tin, a motion blur. So we toggle this icon here. It looks like the bouncing ball. 
we toggle that and we need to turn it on here and what that should do is it softens our edges I mean um, if I pump this up a bit to maybe half you can see how it's like almost feathering out our edge and if we toggle that off you, you can sort of see the difference and it's just gonna make the whole thing look a bit nicer and more or less we're happy with that we're not done yet though I'm just going to hit enter on this and call this blue circle spin and what we want to do next is we want to create another circle so we've got a circle tool and we're going to do the same things before we're going to hold shift and draw our circle this time though we want a fill but we want a white fill because the icon sits on the white and we actually don't want any stroke this time we don't want any stroke we're going to bring the scale down so it's more sort of in line with our wheel cool um, obviously the problem with that is if I deselect it it disappears altogether what Google are doing though is they're applying a drop shadow so if we click our layer go up to transform uh, nope it's not transform sorry even layer styles and find drop shadow drop shadow now here are all our drop shadow options there's lots of them as you can see we're going to want to set the degree to 90 so it's looking right down underneath it as you can see we've got like this crescent shape increase our distance just a little bit nine is pretty good actually and our spread is going to soften the whole thing what do you know so sort of soften it down a little bit and same with our size you see what that's doing the more we increase it if we have none it looks like a hard shape but we want that sort of soft light Cool, happy with that. And I'm going to bring my opacity down to about 35, 40 ish. For it looks decent. And yeah, I am happy with that. I'm going to get my blue circle to parent my shape so it's going to follow my shape around. But anyway, let's see what that looks like. Yes, looking pretty nice already. And we're just going to complete the animation process by going on to our shape, going to our drop down, find position, and bring this up to the top. If you, you know, actually, what I should discuss is let me delete this for a second because we know that this width is. 1080 we know that half of 1080 is 540 because we're human calculators and that will fit sit right in the middle so do that first then drag your position when it starts screen if you hold shift when you're moving up and down it should it'll stick set that place start off screen after about a second we want it to be on screen we'll just select our endpoint let's say about here go back a couple of frames because what I like to do is add the spring so I'm gonna go back a few frames and pull it down below and what that does is it creates that spring effect nice um, I'm gonna press if I right click this and say keyframe assistant and put some easing on there it makes it, it should make it a bit more bouncy now between the keyframes. Yeah. Nice. Cool, we're not done there though, because what we want to do is Google also apply a small opacity fading. So, I'm gonna drop that down to about 40%-ish, 30%, give or take, and Annoyingly, I will need to do the same on this as well. So if 
find the same points, you'd be 100% here, and here you'd be about 40%. And let's see how that looks. Cool, loading, 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 pulling your emails. About this point, we found some. So what we're going to do at this point is add some another, add some more keyframes. In fact, we don't need to affect our position at this point. It's also dawning on me that I think I might have overlooked something, which we'll find out in a minute when I turn on my scale. Because if I affect my scale, oh no, we're good. My anchor points are right. I thought I might have thought to adjust my anchor point. If you have anchor point problems, if it doesn't scale down in the position that it's in, um, you need to just readjust your anchor point by just rolling these numbers until your dot falls in the middle. Cool, so we turn on our scale and then go forward. What I want is a little pop. So I'm going to go forward and I'm going to scale you up a bit before you rapidly come down. Go to about 20-ish, doesn't matter because we're going to make it disappear over here. And we will need to repeat said opacity up here for that. And I think we are good. Let's have a look, shall we? Yeah. Cool, we have one small problem now, and I'm sure you've noticed it is bouncing around in there. Bouncing around. And we don't want it to bounce around. So we're going to find our position and we're going to right click. If yours is doing this, go to keyframe interpolation. Don't care about Katana. And I'm going to say you be linear. Is it? Good. Good keyframe. Good keyframe. All right, and hopefully, excellent. No bouncing around. And then you are golden. You know, you're ready to throw this together in whatever you would like to use it for. Be it you're doing a product development, or you're just making some kind of promotional video, and you want this realistic looking Google loading bar, which I'm sure isn't his technical name. You know, I should probably scale it down a bit more anyway, but that's easy enough. Cool. All right, guys. Thanks for watching that. Hope you enjoyed and maybe even learned something.